Yo everyone, what is going on? Welcome to the video, I hope you are all keeping well. And today I'm gonna be talking about the three main reasons you should never do a huge amount of cardio to get shredded or to stay shredded. Because even when we take it back to 2019, when I competed in a bodybuilding show, my main form of cardio was hitting my step goal. And this is of course still doing cardio in some sense, but I wasn't spending hours and hours every week on the step master or doing hit or whatever it might be. And before we get started, I do wanna preface this by saying I am by no means anti-cardio. It is great for your overall health, it is great for your cardiovascular health as well and later on in the video I'm gonna be giving you my cardio recommendations so you strike a good balance when it comes to fat loss, when it comes to muscle growth and when it comes to your overall health. So let's get started and the first reason I don't rely heavily on cardio for fat loss is simply because it's not a great fat loss tool because when it comes to losing fat you need to be burning more calories than you consume on a daily basis aka you need to be in a calorie deficit, but the calories that you typically burn in a cardio session is quite minimal. So for example, if you weigh 75 kg, then in one hour of brisk walking on the treadmill, you'll probably burn somewhere between 500 and 600 calories. However, I could go home, I could order a takeaway, and I could easily consume 2,000 calories or more in the space of 15 minutes. And that difference between time taken to consume calories versus time taken to burn calories is a massive, massive reason as to why diet is a much more powerful tool than cardio when it comes to fat loss, because you just don't have enough time in the day to burn enough calories to lose fat if you are not making the conscious effort to decrease your calorie intake. But now you're probably thinking, well, if I focus on restricting my calories via my diet, and I focus on burning 500 calories per day by doing cardio, I am in a deficit of 500 calories more. So I get the best of both worlds. Well, unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. And that brings me on to the compensatory effects of doing cardio. So let's just say you introduce four grueling cardio sessions into your weekly routine. Well, in this situation, your activity levels outside of training, AKA your neat levels can decrease. And that is because you are just so fatigued. Your legs are so sore that you don't want to move an extra inch if you don't have to. You are putting off doing chores around the house because you are just so beat. And all of this leads to a significant reduction in the calories that you are burning throughout the day. On top of that, it is so easy for your hunger levels to spike when you start introducing this extra cardio into your routine. And that can lead to you consuming maybe uh, bigger portions at dinner. You might get an extra takeaway at the weekend because you feel like you deserve it. You might be snacking a little bit more throughout the day. And as I mentioned before, no matter how much cardio you do, you can easily cancel out those extra calories burned with a few last minute rash decisions when you are hungry. Quickly before I get on with the video everyone, and as soon as this goes live, I I am opening up a handful of one-to-one -one online coaching spaces. So if you wanna work directly with me and lose a significant amount of fat before the end of the year, or if you want to nail down a space to work with me from the beginning of 2023, then I will leave my coaching application form in the comment section below. It will be the pinned comment at the top. So fill out your details, I will get in touch, we can have a chat and we'll go from there. And before I move on to what my cardio recommendations actually are, I want to give you the final reason that I don't do a huge amount of cardio and that is because it can be quite difficult to recover from. And this isn't a huge problem when it comes to low intensity steady state training, but when it comes to your higher intensity work, so high intensity interval training, like sprints on the treadmill, or a typical HIIT workout, including the likes of jumping jacks and mountain climbers and burpees, these can leave you feeling pretty destroyed. So if you're doing a few of these higher intensity workouts per week, it is most likely going to affect your resistance training performance. And that is a trade-off that just isn't worth it because we know that resistance training is a really powerful tool for building muscle, but cardio isn't a massively effective tool for losing fat. So if your less effective fat loss tool is getting in the way of your very effective muscle building tool, you need to rearrange that toolbox. But this is all very doom and gloom so far. And as I said before, cardio is such a great tool for improving your overall health. And when you find the right balance, it can actually improve your resistance training performance as well, especially during those higher rep sets that require that extra bit of endurance. So let me give you my top three cardio recommendations that can make all of the difference. Oh, before I do that, if you are enjoying this video so far and you have not 
hit the subscribe button. Make sure you do so now between these videos, my full day of eating videos, between the short videos that I do, I bring out so much useful content on a weekly basis. So hit that subscribe button, you will not regret it. So firstly, if you are at the beginning of your fat loss journey and you have quite a lot of fat to lose, I recommend keeping cardio at a minimum and instead focus mostly on creating your calorie deficit through your nutrition and also remaining active by doing resistance training. Because remember, you burn calories doing this as well. But that's not to say that cardio should be completely non-existent at this stage because it shouldn't and I still recommend doing a small amount whether it's one to two cardio workouts per week or simply just setting yourself a step goal that requires you to walk a little bit more than you usually do. But keeping your cardio at this level initially and knowing that you have the capacity to increase it uh, when or if your fat loss slows down is a really good position to be in so you should be viewing cardio as a tool that you can introduce more and more as your journey progresses versus something that is the main driver of your fat loss like your nutrition is. And just as a general indicator here, if you are uh, losing somewhere between 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per week by doing a combination of focusing on your nutrition, on your resistance training, and a little bit of cardio as well, then I wouldn't be in any rush to make changes to your calorie intake or to uh, introducing more cardio until things start to slow down dramatically. And that leads me on to my second point, and that is when you are in the gym, put most of your efforts into your resistance training because if the goal of your fat loss journey is to achieve a more toned and a more defined physique, if you don't have a solid muscle base, then you could lose all of the weight in the world and you will still not be happy with your results. So by putting most of your time into resistance training, you are ensuring that this isn't the case. And then when it comes to how you fit your cardio in around this, you have two options. So option number one is to keep them completely separate. So for example, uh, you could do your cardio in the morning and your weights in the evening, or you could do them on completely separate days, making sure that more of the days are going towards resistance training versus cardio. However, splitting your weight sessions and your cardio sessions up isn't a viable option for most people. So option number two is if you are doing them both in the same session, make sure you do your weight before your cardio because you don't want to be going into your weight session in a position where you're already feeling fatigued because you just won't be able to get the most out of it from a performance point of view and from a muscle building point of view. And lastly, when it comes to the type of cardio that you're doing, for the most part, I recommend opting for lower intensity over higher intensity because lower intensity is just so much easier to recover from. However, high intensity is by no means the devil when it comes to cardio. And if you enjoy it, um, or you maybe don't have time to get a low intensity session in because they require that bit more time, then you can still include some high intensity work. But my advice is to limit these high intensity sessions to one to two per week max. And if possible, opt for lower impact work like bike sprints versus higher impact work like treadmill sprints because the lower impact work is going to be easier to recover from. But yeah, I'm going to wrap the video up there, people. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you comment below and let me know, even if it's just for the algo, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe button between full day of eating videos, between information videos like this, between meal prep videos. I have all the videos. I have all you could ever need. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. You won't regret it. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are all keeping well and I will see you in the next video.